here with Natalie, together we're the co-chairs of the Equals Network. So that's one of the employee-led networks, MNC Saatchi. And our mission is to kind of equalize the gender experience of the agency. Um, Harry, do you want to start the Zoom recording now? Yeah, oh, it's already awesome. going. Perfect. Um, so we are also in here and joined by Ksenia Brazilian. Is that how you pronounce yeah. it? <laughs> Perfect. Um, and unlike me, Ksenia is an expert in all things digital and technology, specifically the field of uh, Web3. Um, so she's been a marketing and growth expert for over nine, 10 years now. Uh, with various projects across various industries. So we've invited her today to take a look at the kind of um, how that industry is developing, why it's important for us, um, why we should care, and in, in particular, just look at the kind of gender disparity in that space as well. I think the theme for Equals Month for us has been uh, a mirror of the UN a uh, theme of digit to all, meaning digital technology, web technology should be as inclusive as possible. But we know that's not the case. In fact, uh, I think it's some 90% uh, of leadership roles are currently held by men. And obviously, if everything trickles down from the top, we see that um, becoming a trend. So I don't want to introduce you completely, Ksenia. I'd love to. Um, for you to introduce yourself. Um, have I kind of captured your bio? Is there anything else you would yes. like to add? First of all, thank you so much for inviting and I'm very happy to be a part of such a great initiative, especially in this month. Um, so I think you've captured the essence of my bio, but to add a bit of layers to there, I had quite a few shifts in my career, so to say, so my education was in banking and finance, and initially I aspired to be a banker. Then I turned to brand management and uh, marketing and worked my way through all the time marketing, but in a couple of different industries, starting from the fashion industry through to healthcare, where I was running my own business, and then eventually moved to technology side. And for the past three years, I've been working with uh, different blockchain-based projects in particular working in Web3 marketing. So um, as a side thing, I'm also mentoring different projects with accelerators. So um, in the past three years, I was able to grasp a lot of different concepts in this industry and work with a lot of um, completely different companies. So hopefully my experience is gonna be useful for you. Oh, well, we're really, really glad to have you here. So let's just start right at the beginning. And I'm going to play the person that asks all the questions that, uh, because I'm fundamentally quite ignorant myself in this space. You know, what is Web3? Like, what, what is it and why should we care? Sure. So in simple terms, Web3 is an iteration of internet. So an iteration of web. In, um, in a nutshell, the way you can uh, look at it is Web1 was the first iteration of internet where the websites were looking more like the boards where you could just uh, go and see the page with all the information. The web two iteration was the internet probably as we know it now, or at least as we knew it until now. So this is the internet where you could not only read, but also write. So think about social media, where you could read what other people are doing and also post your own thoughts. Web3 is adding another dimension to the internet. So instead of just read and write, it's also read, write, and own. So in the uh, grant idea of things, it's going to be the internet where you can own your information. So let's say instead of writing on social media platforms, where if your platform is going to be closed, you lose all the access and you lose all your work, your information is going to belong to you. Also, Web3 is adding different concepts to the mix, such as tokenization, such as blockchain technology, NFTs, um, metaverse, augmented reality, artificial intelligence, and all the, basically it's the internet with an additional layer of all the new technologies for enhanced experience. So why should we care in a nutshell? I think because it's inevitable. So things are changing all the time. We have a lot of changes now in the society. In uh, economy, we have a lot of problems brewing. Um, 
in society in general. So I feel like Web3 is kind of an answer to some of those problems where people have more ownership, they have more say, and have basically more stages to be um, seen and uh, taken into account. So not, not just a buzzword, a th we should all be waking up to the inevitability of Web3. So exactly. I, th I think what we're we're really excited about is we I mean we have clients and different um uh brief scope specialties that we do on behalf of those clients they span government FMCG finance I work a lot with alcohol brands um things like football so I guess what are the kind of the the industries uh, that are making the kind of biggest impact in Web3 or they're really, truly embracing it? You know, what are the sectors that you're seeing or trends that you're seeing in the space? I would say that blockchain in general can work with any industry because there are so many different implications and you can, um, as a company in any sector, you can choose different ways to interact with a blockchain. You can either like build your products or services on the blockchain, so use the technology itself, or you can use kind of the byproducts of this technology, such as NFTs, for example. So um, let's say one of the main examples of using the technology itself probably would be the governments. And uh, for the work workshop, I will go more into details about how governments are using it. But in a nutshell, think of things like um, having your identity in a digital way on the blockchain. So not having to uh, basically keep track of your medical records or not being scared that something can got stolen. Or let's say like if you lose your passport, you cannot travel, you can not do a bunch of other things. Now imagine that you have all of this information in a digital way. And uh, it's impossible to alter it. It's impossible to um, steal it, lose it, or just it stays with you no matter what's happening. Also, companies that have the supply chain, they're using blockchain um, in majority of the cases to prove where the goods came from, to verify the journey of the goods, which is another great implication of the blockchain. In terms of different, I'm calling them byproducts of the technology itself, like um, NFTs, for example, or the tokens. A lot of FMCG companies or, um, for example, fashion brands are using them simply to engage their audience more. Because instead of the audience that is uh, very common in Web2, in Web3, we shifted to the community. So community is basically your audience that has some additional rights, that has like more say, more power to shape your product, more power to shape the way you uh, do your services and the choices that the company makes. So here, um, different blockchain-based technologies are kind of adding an addi additional dimension to what the company is doing and including the users more into all the processes. So you can essentially use the blockchain and technology based on the blockchain for each and any company. So intellectual property ownership rights is uh, one of the huge benefits of the space. Exactly. I would say anything connected with the ownership, with proving this ownership or transferring it in any way, um, anything thing connected with uh, creating more trust, more transparency, immutability, or anything connected with um, basically getting rid of any situations where the data leak or um, any sort of failure connected to sensitive information can happen. Um, any of those issues can be closed by the blockchain. So it seems, I mean, it seems like utopia, right? What are the What's the, I guess, the opposite side of the debate? Is there any reasons why we shouldn't engage with Web3 or that uh, there's an element of risk there? Or what's the conversation around that at the moment? Um, I wouldn't say it does sound like a utopia. And I think the main question is like, if uh, the idea is great, right? And the implications are great and uh, people will be happy to be more involved because we're becoming more and more vocal as a society and more alert to different things. Um, but I would say like, 
On the con side, it's probably the um, technological aspect because it's quite difficult to build it. It's uh, quite difficult to integrate different parts of the technology or integrate different separate blockchains because now there are um, probably thousands of different blockchains. And the main issue is that the technology is quite raw. So um, the speed is not there. So it's not, um, let's say if you do finance on a blockchain, you cannot yet reach the same speed as if you're using um, Visa or MasterCard. Um, the tech is simply not there and it's probably gonna take some time to foster the development. Um, so probably on the technological side, we're moving to Utopia, but with very small steps. Gotcha. And one thing you did um, mention was uh, NFTs. Now, at, for around Equals, we have created, or we're working with an artist that's created this amazing piece of artwork in our reception area. And um, we're filming content of it being incrementally built by everyone in the business. And the ambition is to create that into an NFT and sell it for charity. Mm -hmm. So it feels amazing that that kind of stuff is possible now. Um, I mean, is it on NFTs? Like, are they, how, how does, how do NFTs work? Uh, yeah, so um, in simple terms, you have the tokens. You can basically tokenize any product or any kind of service. But with the tokens, anything that lives in the internet can be duplicated, right? So you need some kind of gating technologies that prevent the duplication. So NFT is um, translated as a non-fungible token. So it's basically the token that cannot be duplicated. So it's something unique and something one of a kind that also lives on the blockchain and is also simply a type of a token. Um, NFTs are now widely used in um, different aspects of like a life of a company. Um, for example, you can give the rights for something via an NFT. You can basically um, insert any rights online or offline and give it to a certain group of people via an NFT. Also, uh, another interesting side of the NFT is um, every time you move the ownership. So it makes um, moving the ownership way easier. And every time the NFT changes the owner, if you sell it, let's say, um, the original founder or the original owner of this NFT keeps getting the royalties. So um, NFTs at first became super popular um, in the art industry, in the music industry, yeah. everywhere where it's very difficult to um, prove whether the piece of art is real and uh, where you need things like provenance, for example, for paintings um, to, to show the all the way that this painting has done. Now imagine like transferring the same, basically the accounting book on the blockchain where you keep everything over the internet and uh, all the story of this piece of art is publicly available. So now NFTs are branching out to um, other different forms and other different industries. I think for me personally, one of the most interesting concepts is uh, NFTs connected to land rights or property rights. Because I think it's uh, an incredible thing to do because this industry is very complicated. There's a lot of fraud involved in it and uh, a lot of different um, intricate situations which can be avoided by the NFTs. Sounds like there's a lot of opportunity for people selling. What about the people that are buying, the consumers? Uh, for the consumers as well, first of all, there's um, security that you know where, let's say, in um, to simplify the example, let's say that we're talking about the purchase of uh, a piece of art. So as a seller, you... Um, you engage in a smart contract. So you know that by selling an NFT, you cannot be scammed. Like let's say if you are transferring the piece of art itself, you will get the money in return. Um, and there's no way to like avoid um, the payment from the buyer's side. 
for the buyer, um, he or she can be completely sure that um, this piece of art is genuine. They see all the um, history of this piece of art or like so-called transactions on the blockchain. They can later transfer ownership in, in the easy way by like reselling it. And uh, also like keep getting royalties from each and every additional sale. Wow. Thank you very much. That's 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 really helped. New frontier in marketing, existing frontier in marketing. <laughs> um, but let's kind of move slightly to just to talk a little bit about your experience. So you've been in the business for you know nearly ten years in in different guises. Um, you've obviously had a very you know interesting journey. Um, how how did you kind of get into Web three marketing? Like what was why did you move into that space? And um, can you sort of tell us what a, a day in your life is? What does it look like? You, you don't need to tell us what time you wake up, but what <laughs> do you do in a day to day? We I think would be is really mm -hmm. interesting. Sure. So I got into Web three quite randomly, and I think I've never heard anyone in this industry who was like dreaming to be in, in the blockchain or web three, because it's just such a new concept yeah. that usually people uh, found out about it from somewhere and just like started learning and came to the industry. Um, my journey was quite interesting because um, I was recommended to a fresh startup that was in the crypto space. And uh, I was completely honest that I didn't know anything before that. And they basically told me that they need marketing brains and they're ready to teach me everything that where I'm lacking. So all the parts of technology and like how this world, how this industry works. So I worked with them for a couple of months and became completely fascinated by everything that's happening there. Just because for me, I always liked the technology aspect. I always liked um, when it was unique and, you know, like, I think that one of my strengths is converting difficult concepts into something more um, digestible and easier to understand. And this is what I really enjoy in my work. So here, as you can imagine, there's plenty of things like that. Um, so this is how I started. And uh, then I just started learning more and uh, try to test my knowledge to convert it into skills in like different areas of Web3. Uh, regarding my typical day, um, I think it's a tricky question for me because um, I don't have something that's like a typical day. Yeah. So um, I work remotely. My team is based everywhere in the world with majority of people in the industry, I think, being uh, based across uh, either United States or anywhere like on the Asian side. Um, we have quite a big team at my current project and uh, also I'm doing other side activities in the industry as well. But I would say in marketing terms, uh, probably what I'm spending more time on now it should be content, social media and uh, community efforts because those are kind of three key pillars in the Web3 marketing now. Um, but the typical day really depends on what kind of project you work for in this industry because you have different varieties. Like you can be in finance, you can be in NFT collection, you can be in the metaverse project, you can be in a uh, gaming industry or something that's more um, like a centralized company. For example, like a cryptocurrency exchange that belongs to one um, entity, but also working with crypto tokens. So um, the day-to-day -day activities will also differ on the type of the company you work for and uh, like an additional complication for a web3 marketer is um, your day-to-day -day activity differs depending on what's happening on the market so um, this industry is very sensitive to any changes in like politics and economics so you need to stay kind of up to date with the news and uh, also we have such things called uh, bear market when like the market is kind of dying down it's slower and the bull market when there is uh, a lot of interest the volatility is very high in the market and uh, a lot of newcomers are arriving who maybe don't know anything about web3 don't know anything about crypto so here like the level of educational content content really varies throughout the cycles 
what's what's the bit that you like about it so much what's your kind of what gets you up in the morning like this this is this part is part of my job that I really really enjoy for me I would say that first of all in terms of the industry itself that it's very fast-paced there are lots of different concepts popping up every day um, and uh, I think because of that, everybody's kind of in the same boat. So you will never be, let's say, like the smartest person in the room. And uh, everybody has to learn something. And that's why um, people are very excited in the industry. They love to share. And there is a lot of support going on. So you can literally reach out to more or less anyone, suggest to collaborate, suggest some kind of a joint idea, or just like, suggest them to jump on a call and uh, chat, discuss your ideas, which um, I found to be like more open in terms of like how people communicate than majority of traditional spaces. Um, I think it's also what I find fascinating in this industry because it's very new. People who are coming as users or maybe even potential community members, they're also super active and super vocal. And uh, what is interesting for me is um, when I was in Web2 space, um, my uh, previous job was at Skyscanner. So we worked a lot with uh, different travel influencers and we tried to create different kinds of communities. So I love this aspect of connecting with people and uh, basically asking for their help to shape our product offering, to help us tell a more compelling story so here in Web3, uh, because the space is so receptive, I feel like you almost instantly get feedback for anything you're doing. And um, most of the times, it's kind of just like observing what people say and how they behave and asking them actively to help you um, and then implementing all of that into your product. Because for me, I'm very interested in psychology personally. Okay. And this is, I think, like behavioral marketing on steroids. <laughs> so you just like, you place a drop and then you see how it works. See what happens, yeah. So obviously you're a bit of a top dog. Um, are there many <laughs> are there many other kind of women that occupy like leadership roles in Web3? Like how, how uh, diverse is the space that you're working in? Um, that's a great question. I've just came back from one of the top conferences in the space, and uh, I think that was a great example of like the space being not diverse. Um, probably, I would say that there are 80% men and 20% women, which is also getting better because let's say uh, when I went to my first in real life conference three years ago, it was... Um, even a worse situation, there were almost no women, or there were women who were more on like trading side on, or the investor side. So not really working on the side of the technology builders themselves. So now I think it's getting better. Um, first of all, because um, the space is evolving, there are more jobs. And um, I feel like most women are coming not through the tech side, but through the marketing, business development, sales positions, so anything that has like sort of more traditional attachment to it. Mm. Also, there is a lot of interest from um, people who are the founders of uh, blockchain-based projects. They want to see more uh, talent coming from traditional industries with the solid background that know the fundamentals of like work in, let's call it a normal world. Um, because I feel like the Web3 space was developing really um, kind of an isolation for a long time. Okay. Like imagine it's the industry that started from forums and from internet discussions um, among people who were mathematicians, among people who were developers. So as you can imagine, they are like hardcore builders. They don't necessarily know how to promote. They don't necessarily know how to get users, how to engage with people. And it's a completely different um, like frame of understanding the world and interacting with the world as well. So now I think um, the industry is um, about 12 years old. So it's getting more and more mature. There are lots of connections to traditional companies as well, even governments. 
And that's why there is more need for people with different backgrounds. But I would say in terms of the current blockchain space, um, it's I love the word digital that you used because it's not just inequality um, men versus women. It's also inequality technical people versus people with other skill sets, which I think is getting addressed more. But because it's a very, um, um, it's kind of, it's an easy industry to grow in, but it's a difficult industry to get into just in terms of like the amount of information and knowledge you need to get prior. But I think now with different educational and uh, like community-based initiatives is getting better. Wow. I just want to follow on from that. Um, how do you think, so you've spoken about being in Web2, finance and tech, all very kind of huge gender imbalances in those industries too. How does Web3 actually differ from those industries? Is it, is it worse or is it getting better, as you said, or compared to finance and the previous things we've done? That's a great question. Um, I think worse is probably the wrong word because it has a negative connotation, right? I feel like um, what was my personal impression of the space mm -hmm. is that um, as it's kind of like, we call it a bro culture, right? There are all the people who are from the technical background. They look in a different way. They speak their own language. So um, I think as a woman coming to this space, obviously uh, not a lot of us spend our days on Twitter, right? We, we have other things to do. Um, and probably would prefer sometimes to do other things rather than like staying on internet forums. So I think it's more like, um, I try to see it as the space that is very welcoming, but at the same time, I think what I learned from conversations with different women, you probably need to be, you need to lose like this, um, kind of lose the sensitivity a bit and uh, try to like see what's happening in the space for people's intentions rather than their delivery. Because there can be situations when like, um, you know, I was asked on a conference, like, wow, this is so impressive. You're a CMO and you're a woman. Wow. And I'm like, <laughs> it's so awkward, but I know that it's not coming from a bad place. Mm -hmm. It's just coming from a person who like never works with women, never sees women in the space and is genuinely interested. Like, is it yeah. different on another <laughs> side or how does it work? So I think if you can navigate around those situations and probably like, um, you know, take what is important out of the interactions rather than like pay attention to some like bloopers, you're going to have a great experience. Yeah, definitely. And I thank you for sharing that. I think you have such a positive mindset around it. And I think that's something that's really important to acknowledge. Um, and like bro culture, I, you don't even need to explain what that is. And I think we all know what, what you're talking about. And um, what, what is something that we can do as maybe as a society that we can combat this gender imbalance? Is it something that maybe we can start sharing to younger women? What is your take on it? Um, I think, first of all, education, because now, um, as I mentioned already, it's quite difficult to enter this industry in terms of like the knowledge you need to have. Um, I wouldn't say even it's difficult to enter. It's just like, I think at the current stage, it requires a lot of interest from you personally, because everybody who I know in the space, they're all self-taught because the space is very new. But at the same time, as you can imagine, like there's so many different concepts already because it's been existing for the past uh, decade. So it's just, I always think that it's up to people who come to the space to like um, be very active, to ask questions, to say that they don't understand something and need some more explanations, to reach out. Because sometimes like when you're inside, it's difficult for you to understand that somebody else might not understand what you're talking about and I think like one of the um, it's exactly one of the issues with a bro culture it's not because people want to create this culture it's just because sometimes they're talking and they're so um into this environment that they don't understand that they use a completely different language mm -hmm. like in my current team for example I'm sometimes just telling them I don't understand what you're talking about. I need a translation. I need like humanized version of whatever you're saying. 
and they're usually very happy to kind of like do some hand hand holding and walk you through but i think it's just like it's up to you to be active and um i think Another key aspect is in here, um, what I'm noticing more, initially it was um, people talking just about educating uh, women in the space, about the technical concepts, about different like terms in the industry. Now I see a bit more of um, explaining to women basically how to navigate the space in terms of like some behavioral things. And, uh, you know, I think as it might sound weird, but I think like observing how women work and how men work, we interact sometimes in different ways, right? It's just because we were like raised differently. We have like different standards from the society. And uh, I think in a lot of parts of, of our life, there's this kind of segregation. Like those things are for women. Those things are for men. This is for girls. That's for boys. So I think it creates some kind of a psychological divide that we have to like when we're adulting we have to overcome it yeah for sure and I think that definitely speaks to the gender equity that we're really passionate about um, and recognizing that men and women start from different starting points so if I as a woman I want to get into web3 and I have the passion for it I've seen a, a few posts on Instagram with some definitions what would you recommend is like the best next step for someone to upskill or just learn a bit more keep up to date with the news as you said it's super fast pace so what would be like a great next step for me um, I would say there are probably two steps like first of all um, kind of educate yourself on what exists in the space so probably um, there's nothing better than just like doing google search for particular terms that you heard and just like uh, reading a couple of articles on each topic because also um, I think one of the complications of blockchain space there is no single authority because the whole point of it is that it's decentralized. It's like anyone can um, voice their opinion, anyone can share their opinion. So there is no single platform where you go and you're like, oh, okay, I start from here and I finish there. And there are also a lot of like um, different paths you can take. So the way I started um, going about the blockchain space I started with a concept of blockchain itself, like what is the technology, why is it important and how does it work? You don't need to have any technical understanding, I think. You need to just like have a very basic understanding of what it is. Um, then I started going through different concepts on the blockchain, like what is a token, what is an NFT, what is metaverse? How do they interact? And like basically for me as a user or for me as a marketer, what's interesting and what, what are going to be the benefits. Um, then I think depending like on how deep you want to go, if you just want to stay on top of different news, uh, there are platforms like Cointelegraph or Coindesk that aggregate the news um, across everything that's happening in Web3, um, be it like different projects, different trends in the industry or partnerships with um, other companies. Um, or if you want to, let's say, like work with a blockchain project in particular, I think like there is nothing better than going to Twitter and just like pressing a bunch of follows on different accounts and just seeing what they do. Because usually top people in the industry, they set trends and you can kind of um, feel the pulse of what's happening. Wow. Yeah, that is, I mean, there's so much readily available information these days. It's just about getting into the right spaces and stuff. And I think if you have the passion, surely, as you said, it's just about educating yourself and stuff like that. That sounds great. Um, I think we have time for one final question before we open it up to everyone on the Zoom. Um, so you already spoke about how, what kind of digital means to you and how that inclusivity, you appreciate it and that, yeah that this is our theme for International Women's Day. I was just wondering, what do you think digital means in and could possibly look like in the Web3 space? I'm really loving this word. And I think I gave a lot of thought to it, especially because as I mentioned, I just came back from the event and uh, there were like different side events and some side events for women in particular. 
Um, I see it in both ways. I really think that it's great to have the spaces where um, people with similar backgrounds can support each other. And uh, I'm personally part of a lot of um, initiatives for women in Web3, and I find them super refreshing because when you work with men, sometimes you're just like, is it something wrong with me? Or is it just like, do I see the world differently and should it be fine? Or like you encounter some things and in interaction with certain people where you're also like, is it okay? Is it not okay? And uh, I found it amazing to share with women um, like experiences I was going through and like find out that a lot of people are going through the same so we can like jointly think of a response jointly think of a solution there is also a lot of initiatives kind of like um educating each other and upscaling because as again as we come from kind of a similar background we can like help deliver the information way better um what i see as the negative side i would say um, I think any community that is kind of uh, focusing on just one aspect, sometimes it creates like more, um, more division between different mm -hmm. groups. So what I liked a lot at the events where I was, they were focused on women at Web3, but also they were inviting men. And I think for men as well, it's kind of, you know, like peeking behind the curtain of like what's happening there, why women are gathering, like what kind of issues they may have in the industry, because basically to create a space that is um, supportive and that is welcoming for everyone, we not only need to educate the minorities of, on um, minority groups on what's happening, we also need to educate the majority groups into like how to ease the entry of minorities into the industry um but i would say like for me probably digital has also like two aspects both the people who feel like they're from the minority group and the people who feel like they're part of the majority group because i think for like women in the space or any group that is underrepresented it's super important to have the right mindset and just mm -hmm. like all the things that I mentioned before, not think that the space is hostile, but try to be open and just like try to find where you feel comfortable and what works for you personally. Yeah. Wow. What a beautiful end. I think you summarized that amazingly. <laughs> well, it, yeah. The community aspect, but also the importance of having allyship, support and educating everyone is something that we, we definitely champion as an equals network as well, which is why there's, I can see some men also on the Zoom call. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much for sharing your experience. And I will just open up to the floor if anyone has any questions. There's one in the chat, so I might kick off with this one. Um, we have a quest question from Christy, which conference was the one that um, you attended? It was called ETH Denver. So it's like a series of different events um, hosted by Ethereum community, which is like one of the top cryptocurrencies in the space. And they do them all over the world. But apparently it was my first conference in the US and apparently it's like the biggest in the world. And uh, it was something completely crazy. There were like 25,000 people who registered wow. and uh, some other people who did not even go to the conference, but were going to different side events. So it was just like, four days of information, networking, uh, drinks, and stuff like that nonstop, which was really fun and like really interactive. Wow, amazing. Sounds good. Are there any other questions? Um, hi, this is Vinci from Claire. Um, thanks so much for sharing and also totally resonating with your past because I started my past from finance as well. Um, mm -hmm. sort of navig navigating through and ended up here uh, as a strategist. Um, I'm just like most interesting in hearing a bit more details in terms of Web3 marketing application, or also the gender dynamic when it's, you know, in, in a day-to-day -day working context. Um, mm -hmm. I guess I have two questions for you. Um, the first question is, what is the most interesting project you've been working on since you've sort of joined the Web3 marketing space? The second question, I guess, is just to understand your sort of your top tips for all women, and I guess in this court, how to manage those, um, those sort of more like men leading 
conversation or dynamics? How do you manage those stakeholders? What are your top tips when it comes to like day-to-day -day working with men in, in industry mm -hmm. as well? Both great questions. Um, I think from the first one, it's very difficult to say what's the most interesting um, because they're all like so different and so unique. And what I like about the space is that there are some projects that bring something completely different to the industry, uh, whether it's like gaming, for example, that doesn't have any borders and where you can start playing and start earning um, tokens, start earning money and other different things, uh, which is done in like some revolutionary way, or whether it's something in uh, finance. For example, like now I'm working with an um, options trading protocol, which is like financial derivatives on the blockchain that are starting um, some things that don't exist in the current um, decentralized finance market. And they're very niche. So I think in terms of marketing, for me, probably this is one of my most interesting and at the same time, like toughest experiences. Because there are lots of things that are off the table because we're a financial company and it's financial securities. So like I never worked with legal so much in my life uh, where you have to like tailor every word and tailor the delivery so you don't like show that you are selling something. But at the same time, you're kind of promoting the services. Um, and uh, in terms of technology as well, I think it's currently like I'm in one of my top technical teams where it's also challenging, like, how do you take like 10 unique features and let's say package them on the website or package them in a single social media post or in a content strategy. So there are lots of different things. Um, for the second question, um, I would say like gender dynamics is really interesting in uh, Web3. For example, currently, we have two women in my team and it's a team of 26 people and uh, i know that they really want to get more uh more women on board but obviously it comes like with um you don't just want to get more women on board right you basically a lot of people in the space don't care about gender they just care like who's the best candidate because as it's a startup space you cannot afford to um take someone on board just for representing more different groups. You want to take somebody who's gonna like push the whole project further. Um, so yeah, would say probably like that. Um, in terms of working with different founders, what I found I think different between Web2 space and Web3 space, Web2 for the past decade was focusing a lot of attention into creating the culture. And uh, there are some initiatives forming now or like being very solid in terms of inclusion in Web3 space, simply because it's very young. It's starting from those bras in front of their computers. I think they start thinking about the inclusion and the culture just now. And uh, sometimes you see like things that are for me super logical, like let's say if you don't uh, get everyone on the call and explain like, what are you going to do? but work with different groups and silos, you're gonna face an issue. Sometimes you see all this type of things. And uh, I think for me, probably what I'm seeing uh, from my personal interactions, I sometimes get frustrated. And uh, sometimes I start thinking like whether some people are treating me like this just because they do it to everyone or can it be the gender aspect, which I'm trying to cut out because I think Sometimes it really is a gender aspect. And in this terms, I don't think you can actually do a lot with ignorant people. It depends really on the founders and the company, whether they want to promote this in their culture or whether they want to create a space that is kind of safe and uh, uh, prosperous for everyone. Um, but I feel like 90% of people don't really pay attention to gender at all or pay attention to gender in the positive sense. Amazing. Thank you for sharing. Sure. Um, we probably have time for one last question. Um, I've got here one here from Paige Jones. Thank you so much, Ksenia, for a great talk. You mentioned quite a lot of people in the space of self-taught. Would you say just a basic understanding of Web3 is enough to be considered qualified? 
enough to work in the web free world or is a degree of experience needed? Um, I would say it really depends, like, what is your final goal? Like, first of all, there are not so many degrees. And to be honest, um, I probably might sound bad, but I probably wouldn't advise to get the degree in blockchain just because um, I think as well, because the industry is changing so fast, you might like grasp the concepts that were kind of outdated. And basically, if you have the interest, you can learn all those things by yourself. So I would say that basic understanding is enough to start with, because um, initially, for example, in the marketing space, if you plan to work with blockchain projects, they were um, asking for you to be from this industry, just because the um, uh, number of marketing techniques was very limited. Now it's more like they're asking people to have the basic understanding of what's happening, have the understanding of like, what is blockchain? What are things that they are planning to do in their company or with their project? And uh, also to have like great understanding of marketing in general. Because I feel like for me, marketing is one of the most amazing like lines of work that you can do because I feel like it doesn't, if you're a good marketer, it doesn't matter what product you have. If you know like how to get deep and like how to understand everything that you need to understand about the product or service, you will know how to package it. What Web3 is adding is just like a bunch of additional techniques, mm. which are also, I feel like, based on the understanding of what people need in the space. Yeah, amazing. So it's like the same, same skill set, just different applications and ways of thinking about it. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Which is a great final segue because, Ksenia, we're uh, very fortunate to have you today, but you're running a workshop on Thursday. So it's Thursday, 16th of March. That's this week. It's at one o'clock. I believe we've got a couple of spaces left. Um, and I guess the final question before we close very quickly is what can people expect from that workshop? Mm -hmm. Um, so the way I'm structuring the workshop, there are going to be quite a few what is and why it's important. So um, I decided to like go from the fundamentals and basically have some small explanations, like one slide on things like what is blockchain, what is a token, what's NFT, metaverse and different other technologies. And uh, then, as you mentioned, that majority of your clients are in um, different like respective industries, I will go through um, some applications of uh, blockchain as a technology and uh, marketing in this industry um, for, um, pro uh, for the companies in government, in financial sector, FMCG, um, how other big companies like, for example, Starbucks or McDonald's, how are they using metaverse? What do they do with NFTs? And uh, hopefully it will give you a bit more understanding into like how to work around the space and uh, what to offer to your clients in different industries in case they're interested in uh, Web3 type of marketing. Amazing. Really excited. Um, we are conscious that there are train strikes on Thursday. So we're just looking at how we can accommodate that. I know your schedule is really, really busy. So I think Thursday is the only day at this stage that we're able to do. Um, mm -hmm. But we're going to look at ways in which we can make the session virtual and completely accessible as well as um, in person, which which we would recommend. It's always nice to do things in person if you can get to the office. Um, so thank you very much for your time, Ksenia. You've been a brilliant guest. I certainly feel a lot wiser in, um, in your company after this talk. Um, so thank you very much and we'll see you on thank Thursday. Thank you for inviting. It was a pleasure. And hopefully Thursday is going to be more helpful. Great. And we're going to close the recording.